Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Let me give you a weekly update on the Russian aggression against Ukraine between June 26th and July 2nd. The number of ceasefire violations committed by Russia-backed militants ranged between 18 on Monday, June 26th, and 35 on Wednesday and Friday, June 28th and 30th, respectively. Now let's have a look at the overall situation at the front line over the past week. On June 26th, Russian proxies fired 25 mortar bombs at Shastya. On June 27th, Russia-backed militants opened medium-intensity mortar fire at various positions of Ukrainian armed forces. On June 28th, the situation in the sector was the tensest, with Krimske being a hot spot. That day, enemy troops opened mortar fire four times. A total number of mortar bombs fired against Krimske exceeded 140. From Thursday to Sunday, Russia-equipped militants decreased the intensity of hostile fire, committing ceasefire violations across the front line in the sector. Last week, the daily number of ceasefire violations ranged between 1 and 16. Now Donetsk sector. Last week, most intense combat action was registered near Avdivka and adjacent area. On June 26th and 28th, enemy mortar operators engaged positions of Ukrainian army in Avdivka and Kamienka. On June 29th, Russian proxies opened tank and artillery fire, as well as increased the intensity of mortar fire in that same area. That day, the number of bombs and shells fired against Ukrainian servicemen reached 150. On Saturday and Sunday, militants engaged Ukrainian army predominantly with small arms. Last week, the daily number of ceasefire violations in Donetsk sector ranged between 7 and 17. Mariupol sector. On June 27th and 28th, Enemy troops opened medium-intensity in mortar fire against Marienka. On June 30th, Russian proxies engaged Marienka with mortars and artillery. Another mortar attack that day was registered near Krasnohorivka. The most intense combat action in Mariupol sector was registered on July 1st, when Russia-backed militants initiated a powerful two-hour mortar attack at Vodyane having fired nearly 65 rounds. Over the previous week, the daily number of ceasefire violations in the Mariupol sector ranged between 2 and 17. Last week, Ukrainian troops registered 13 episodes of hostile drones conducting aerial reconnaissance in the ATO area. Similarly, the enemy continued performing scouting activities and the territories adjacent to the occupied Crimea. On June 30th, for example, Ukrainian troops detained two Russian border guards in Kherson region in close proximity to the administrative borderline with the Crimean territory. Both detainees are Russian citizens serving in the Russian occupational contingent in the Crimean Peninsula. According to their allegations, they quote, had lost their way during military exercises, end quote. Currently, Russian border guards are kept under arrest at the detention facility in the territory of Ukraine. Over the reported period, no supplies of either fuel or ammunition from Russia into temporarily occupied regions of eastern Ukraine were recorded. Interestingly, Russian supply of fuel to militants in June was reduced by half compared to previous months, which resulted in fuel shortage at gas stations in the so-called LPR. The military intelligence reports that the number of confirmed casualties amongst Russian proxies over the week is 9 killed and 38 wounded. The enemy suffered most casualties in Avdivka area, mainly 44%. Additionally, enemy lost an Ural heavy-duty vehicle, and an infantry fighting vehicle in combat 
on June 27th and 29th, respectively. Last week, five Ukrainian servicemen were killed in action. 24 servicemen were wounded in action. Among them, two servicemen were killed and six wounded as a result of booby trap explosions. Additionally, as the General Staff of Ukrainian Armed Forces reports, overall combat losses within the ranks of Ukrainian military since the beginning of the war in eastern Ukraine accounted for 2,705 troops killed in action and 9,936 troops wounded in action. Our hearts go to the families and friends of the fallen Ukrainian heroes. Recently, a crucial command shakeup took place within the ranks of the enemy troops. According to the Ukrainian military intelligence, the commander of the enemy's so-called 9th Regiment, Nondegir Sibir, was dismissed and sent back to Russia. Notably, this military unit is a part of the so-called 1st Army Corps of Russian Occupational Forces in eastern Ukraine. Lieutenant Colonel Nikolai Shedrin, a.k.a. Nauka, was appointed as an interim commander. The reshuffle apparently was caused by the scandal within the regiment related to the use of physical force by the former commander against one of his subordinates. Let me remind you that the so-called 9th Regiment fights against Ukrainian armed forces in the Mariupol sector and frequently sustains severe casualties. Again, residential and industrial areas on the front line villages and towns came under enemy shelling last week. Twelve private homes were damaged by enemy shells in Marienka district, Mariupol sector. Additionally, Russian proxies hit two non-residential buildings in Marienka town. On July 1st, the enemy damaged power line close to Avdiivka. This resulted in shutdown of Donetsk filtering station close to Avdiivka. More than 20,000 people suffered the shortage of water. According to the data of the State Emergency Service of Ukraine, Donetsk filtering station will resume its operation today, July 3rd. Last week, Ukrainian authorities arranged for access and safe passage through government checkpoints at the contact line of 36 trucks loaded with humanitarian aid for civilians living in the uncontrolled territories of eastern Ukraine. Nearly 550 tons of construction materials, food, medicine, and water pumping equipment were donated by the International Committee of the Red Cross, UN High Commissioner for Refugees, and the Charity Fund to those in need. That'll be all for today. Thank you very much.